Hi everyone, thanks for coming to our March webinar, Advanced Customizations for your Wiki. I'm Sarah Morales, a Director of Community Support here at Wikia, and today joining me is Tim Quiverin, Director of Technical Community Support. Today we'll be talking with you about a couple ways to customize your wiki beyond the theme designer. We will overview general customizations and then we'll look specifically at media wiki messages and using CSS. At the end, we'll be taking questions, so feel free to submit them at any time via the GoToMeeting software. You'll notice everyone's on mute and we're just talking from this end, so feel free to submit any questions related to any of the content or if there's any sort of sound quality issue or anything like that, um, just let us know. Trella is helping out here um, answering questions. So we just need for you guys to let us know. So we know how important it is for you to have a wiki with a unique identity, a look that matches the content that you're chronicling. To support you in this endeavor, we've created the theme designer tool, which allows you to easily adjust the background, word mark, page, button, and link colors. We also allow some customizations using CSS. What areas can this be applied to? Well, I think looking at this example here is a good way to start. Here you can see a screenshot from the Bioshock Wiki. They've created a custom background, a word mark, and main page. You can even see there's a bit of transparency being applied. On the main page here, you can see there's a specific color around the borders and in the background, as well as around templates and other subtleties. These are all customizations that the Bioshock community specifically made for their Wiki. Here's another screenshot from a page on the Vampire Diaries Wiki. The community there has adjusted link color and templates have been customized to match the Wiki's theme. The quote box contains a red border, as do the elements of the info box. We do have some limitations on customizations that are stated in our terms of use and in more basic terms on our help customization policy page, which you can see listed on the top here. It's impossible for us to create an exhaustive list of do's and don'ts for customizations because there's so many different variations out there. But we have created a list of examples that you can follow there to kind of act as your guide. Please visit that page to see what that guide is. Now I'm gonna hand the mic over to Tim, who's gonna talk with you about media wiki messages and CSS. Hello everyone, I'm Tim Quivern. Uh, if you want to find me here on Wikia, I am under the username Danascat. I've been editing Wiki since 2004. For the past couple of years, I've been a member of the community support team with a special focus on technical issues. And in my time on Wikis, I've seen just about every type of customization that could exist. Today, I'm going to share with you some of my knowledge and experience of differing types of customizations and also give you some advice on what has worked well and what hasn't worked well. We'll be focusing specifically on media wiki message and using CSS. <coughs> the base software wiki is run on is called media wiki and it is also one of the default namespaces that exists on each one of your wikis. This namespace defines the text you will see on your wiki's interface, which includes button labels, product names, and any text you see within a feature. This includes the word edit on the edit button, the words message wall on your message wall, and then the term follow on each page, much, much more. Each message has a default term that is associated with it. These are all listed on a special page on your wiki called Special All Messages. You can access this page from the admin dashboard on the Advanced tab and then the System Messages link. Or you can go directly to Special All Messages. On this page is a list of hundreds of system messages. And from there, you can find and see what the value of each message is individually. Now, here's a close-up look at special all messages. The left column is the name of the message, and the right column contains the default message text that is designated for that message. If the name of the message is a red link, that means the message has not been customized locally, and your wiki will pull in the default value for the message from Wikia's code base. If, however, the name of the message is blue and the default message column contains two colored boxes, yellow on top of green, that means the message has been customized for your specific wiki. The top yellow box contains the default text, while the, while the bottom green box contains the adjusted, customized text. Here in this example, you can see that the message, oasis-activity-header, has been changed from recent wiki activity to recent edits. 
So, how do you figure out which message applies to the what you see on your wiki? Well, there's luckily there's a good shortcut for that. Append the URL parameter use lang equal qqx as you can see here on this screen to the end of a page URL. This will tell the page to display the name of the media wiki messages that make up the interface of that specific page. Here is an example from the Habo wiki. You can see on the edit button it states Oasis hyphen view hyphen edit. This means the button label is controlled by MediaWiki Oasis hyphen view hyphen edit. This is super helpful when you're trying to determine which message controls which text. How do you adjust one of these messages? First, you need to be an admin on your wiki. If you are an admin, then all you need to do is find the corresponding message page and click edit. Remember, this will be a page in the MediaWiki namespace with the URL corresponding to the name of the message. As you can see here, to adjust the recent wiki activity message, I went to the URL ending in MediaWiki Oasis hyphen activity hyphen header. From there, you will add a new custom text just like you did on any normal edit page before saving. A quick way to get there is from the special all messages page. So click, we simply click the link on that page to the corresponding message. Before you adjust a message, I would recommend chatting with your other admins so there is an agreement on the wording. Now here you can see an example from the Harry Potter wiki. This is one of our favorite examples. When you have a new talk page message there, it says you have a, quote, new owl to match the Harry Potter storyline where scroll messages are delivered by owls. Hope it isn't a spoiler alert for any of you guys. <laughs> Custom messages to adjust are welcome messages, community corner, chat headlines, or user masthead titles. Now, when adjusting a media wiki message, please keep in mind the following. Editing is in source mode, so any font adjustments must be done using wiki text. Think about word length because you want to make sure that it fits correctly within the provided space. Also use words that everyone understands because it can be fun to adjust the terms to match your topic, but you want to make sure that even new community members or visitors to your wiki understand what the button, link, or icon will do when clicked. And then lastly, don't go overboard. A number of customizations add a unique touch to your wiki, but having too many will lead to confusion even for your wiki's most experienced editors and readers. Here you can see a couple of examples of customizations wikis have done to their chat and page count. Updating messages is a great way to add a little personality to your wiki and provide deeper integration of your topic into your wiki. Changes take place immediately, so feel free to test out a few different terms over a period of time and see what works best. Now, media wiki messages are great for changing text and tiles of pages and buttons on your wiki, but how do you change the aesthetic that is the visual elements of your wiki? We're now going to move on to visual design customizations you can implement. As Sarah mentioned earlier, the theme designer is a great place to start with your initial design. It allows you to easily customize a background, wordmark, page elements, and many other parts of your wiki. Once you have mastered the theme designer, there are more detailed elements you would like to define. To do this, you can use the web markup language CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. It interacts with HTML to allow you to stylize text, images, and the layout of your wiki. HTML is the structure of a page while CSS defines the look of the page. Modifying your wiki CSS is a way to create unique designs for areas not touched in the theme designer. Now, we'll go ahead and say that CSS is a complex language and has lots of intricacies. So today we're going to cover the basics. And of course, with Trello here, you're also free to send in questions and we'll try to answer them at the end. Before we dive into the details of CSS, I want to first cover some basic concepts to keep in mind when designing your wiki. First, focus on readability because people come to your wiki to view the content your community has added. If they can't read the page because it's, you know, colors contrast or there's not enough room to read the words, they won't be able to enjoy the page and they won't feel encouraged to stay there. Think holistically. That means to think of your wiki as a whole and consider each design element a piece of a whole. Do the elements work well together? Are they in contrast? A wiki generally looks better when all the design elements work together, not against each other. So have a consistent design that applies across the wiki. And then lastly, remember space. Padding and white space are your friends. They're there for a reason. The page doesn't feel crowded and overwhelming if you have a good amount of white space. 
If all that white space becomes taken over of your design, again, it's very hard to read and very distracting to the reader. These are wider level concepts you can apply to the color, transparency, and overall design of your wiki. Okay, so with all that in mind, let's dive into applying CSS. On Wiki, you can set up your own personal CSS, which will apply to all wikis you visit. If you are an admin, you can edit your wiki CSS page at mediawiki colon wikia.css. Again, that's mediawiki colon wikia.css, which we also have here on the page for you. This will apply any CSS changes for the wikia skin on your wiki. And now we're going to focus on how to modify and tips for the best way to do so. As with all languages, CSS has a particular syntax that must be followed. This syntax is on the style sheet, which is the MediaWiki wikia.css page. This page is read by your browser when a page on your wiki is loaded and tells the browser how to style specifically defined elements. So what does your browser read? It reads the rules that are defined on the page. This includes selectors and decorations as shown here. A selector specifies the HTML element you are referring to. And then a declaration contains a property and a value. This lets you say what you want to be styled and how. In this slide, the selector is an H1 headline, which is the biggest headline there is, and the declaration includes a property color, which defines the text color with a property value of blue, and a property of font size, which has the value here of 12 point font. This will mean whether there is an H1 header on your wiki, so a page title, for example, it will be displayed as blue text in 12-point font. So now let's look at selectors. Selectors can be any HTML element, a paragraph, a header, links, images. Uh, we also have bulleted and numbered lists there. Essentially anything that exists within the structure of a web page. Each selector uses a specific HTML tag, which you need to know in order to use. The table here shows some common HTML tags you will see used on wikis. Remember, in the CSS syntax, you do not need to include the greater than and less than signs from the HTML tags. So, for example, if we're talking about paragraph, all you need to do is take the P, not the greater than and less than signs. So just the text within those symbols. <coughs> A declaration is what defines how the selector will appear. Maybe the color, size, alignment, or number of other characteristics. Here's a chart of common declarations you will see on CSS pages. Background color, which applies to the background of the element. Color, which applies to the font or text color. Float, which tells the element where to appear on the page. Text alignment, color, and other text characteristics, as well as border width and padding. There are many other declarations you will see, but these are among the most common. To get started, you'll need to go to your wiki's wikia.css page. I recommend choosing just a couple of elements to start with and adding complexity as you become more experienced with CSS. To start, research what the HTML codes are for your selectors, as well as choose what declaration you plan to make. You can look up what declarations are possible at w3schools.com. W3schools.com, and we'll have a link to that later as well, where you can see all the possible CSS values and tests for yourself. Since this affects the whole wiki, it is good to have a chat with your fellow admins about what will be defined here. Remember, what you change on this page affects how the wiki looks to everyone, so it is important that your community is on board with this change. There is a basic pattern you need to know in order for your browser to understand the CSS you are defining. If there is an error, say a typo, your browser will skip applying whatever you define there. So what's the syntax? Selector and open curly parentheses, and then a property with a value. After each property, there is a colon, and after the property value, a semicolon. This separates the property type from the property value, and then each declaration from each other. After this, you can move on to defining another property and value. Is it helpful to put each property with its corresponding value on the same line, and then the next property on the following line? Once you have completed the declarations for a selector, you will add a uh, close bracket and then you can move on to the next selector. As you can see here, the P selector, which means we are, styling the, we are defining the style rather for a paragraph, its declaration states the background will be green, the text will align to the center, and the 
the font size will be 12 point, just like it is right here on the screen. Here we added another selector of corresponding declarations. You can see we are now adding CSS for both paragraph and the H2 headers, which essentially is a section header on your wiki. <coughs> As already mentioned, when you define CSS for an HTML element, the CSS is applied to all cases of that element. So if you state that all H2 elements H, oh, excuse me. All H2 headers are blue, and they will appear as blue on all pages on your wiki. Could be a user page, uh, your main page, or even an article page. Many wikis, though, like to define different designs depending on the type of page or the location within the wiki. This is all possible in CSS. You just need to dig deeper. If there is a distinct feature you would like to apply CSS to, then you can use something called an element ID. This allows you to specifically call out this element on your CSS page by its name and modify the characteristic of just that element. On your wiki, this might include notification bubbles, the word mark, navigation, or the search box. Now, in the screenshot here, we are using the, we are using a developer tool to look at what element ID is being used to color the Wikia notification bubble. The text inside the green box shows the element ID as being Wikia notifications. Below the element ID is a corresponding background color, which defines the color as red, which you can see is the background color of the bubble. If you were to want to adjust this for your wiki, you go to the CSS page, add .wikia notifications. Now the dot, by the way, is there just to say you're asking the CSS to look up the name. So it's .wikia notifications. Using the CSS syntax we just showed and declare the bubble background color as something different. So, now suppose you want to set a specific style to a group of elements, but not your entire wiki. What can you do? In this case, you would want to create a CSS class. A class can include any HTML elements and allows you to apply designs to just that class rather than the entire wiki. So say you want to define just a styling within an info box. You create a class on your CSS page called info box, which states just how you want the info box to be stylized. This could include border, colors, font size, etc., etc. This means that this style will only be applied to the info box and no other part of your wiki. This solves the problem of not having CSS appear wiki-wide, but only on elements you specifically call out. Wikis generally create classes for templates, particularly info boxes and user boxes, galleries, polls, links, tables, and much more. To create a class, go to your Wikia CSS page and follow the same syntax as all previous CSS definitions, but in this case, once again, you need to place a period before the name of the class. This tells your browser that a class name, rather than just a regular HTML element, is being defined. Class names can be anything, but if you use more than one word, make sure to use an underscore between the words, or it will think you have two classes. We strongly suggest you use the most commonly used name for the feature the class is referring to. So rather than me calling a class Tim's Fabulous Template, use a name info box as you see here. In the example, you can see that we have created a class for info box, which will have a background color of white, a two pixel border, and a font size of 14 points. Okay, now Going further, suppose you want to define a style of bulleted lists within the info box. You can do that by adding a specific line class for info box bulleted lists. Here you can see how it is done. Below the first info box class syntax we have demonstrated, you will see we used dot info box, but we added the UL HTML element, which stands for bulleted lists after it. Now this tells the browser that when a bulleted list is inside an info box to color the text red, bulleted lists outside of info boxes will remain as normal or whatever general CSS class is being, affined, is being applied. All right, now that we've looked at the basics, let's look at CSS in action on a wiki. 
Here is a screenshot from the recipes wiki showing the top of their wikia.css page when you are viewing the page. A couple of things you will notice. First, the page is broken into sections with different headers noting what CSS is in that area. This is called commenting and is done by adding a slash star at the start of a comment and a star slash at the end of your comment. This tells the browser that this area includes comments and to ignore the text there. Adding comments like this helps to keep the page organized and easy to cl see clearly what CSS has been applied and helps future coders know what to touch and where. Now here's a screenshot of the same page but in edit mode this time. You can see it is defaulted to source mode and all of the same syntax is there for you to customize. Across Wikia, you will see CSS in all shapes, sizes, and colors. Looking at other wikis is a great way to get inspired as well as to learn how others are using CSS. So what should you do if you see a customization you like and you want to learn what CSS is controlling it? You can use tools built into your browser to see what is being applied. Here, for example, is an info box on Zotopedia. To learn what CSS they use, right-click on info box and choose Inspect Element from the menu displayed. Here we are using Google Chrome, but you can access this in Firefox and other modern browsers as well. Here is what will appear when you click Inspect Element. It is basically a window into what HTML and CSS is being applied to the page. On the left, you can see the HTML for the page. On the right, the CSS that the on the right, the CSS for the info box appears, listing all the properties and values of this, that affects that specific HTML. Within Inspect Element, you can make adjustments to the CSS and get a visual preview of those adjustments without touching the live code. This is a great way to test changes to the current CSS and to learn what declarations control what parts. On the left, you can see we have the current info box, just as it is on Zotopedia right now, and its corresponding CSS. On the right, I went ahead and adjusted the background color by switching the background color value to the HTML color code for Fuchsia. You can see the background when changed to this color. If you're looking for a specific color, check out our help page on colors, which we'll list later in this presentation. Here on the next slide, I've adjusted both the width and the color associated with the border for the info box. So you can see kind of a very different look, obviously, of a lot more blue. And then lastly here, I have flipped the info box to the left rather than the right. Using the inspect element tool is a great way to figure out what adjustments you, want, you might want to make, preview them, and then take that to your CSS page and then save it to make it live. So just some general thoughts. We already went over some basic guidelines, but some more specific things to consider when making a CSS adjustment. Remember readers other than yourselves first. Just because you like the color blue doesn't mean that every user does. Having every single part of your wiki blue is both hard to read and very polarizing. Try to use a healthy mix of lighter, complementary colors. Next, prioritize padding and space. We mentioned this already, but just remember, Five to 10 pixels between table rows goes a long way to make a page flow better. Don't try to load images through CSS, especially high definition ones. It is a slow and effective way to add visuals to your wiki. It's far simpler to add them manually to the pages you want them on than trying to do it through CSS. And then finally, remember the power of simplicity and subtlety. The web is a very busy, distracting space and having a clean, basic, yet carefully designed wiki can help users to focus their most important part, your content. And so as we mentioned, here are some just things we've referenced in this presentation, some places for you to go as resources. www.w3schools.com is a great place to learn about CSS, color codes, HTML elements, other parts of coding, but definitely CSS, a very comprehensive resource there. You also have community.wikia.com, which is uh, Wikia's essential official wiki to re reach out to you members of community. Uh, we suggest you visit the Help Colors page. Um, this lists the basic colors of HTML and explains to how you can find the uh, hexadecimal ver uh, versions of color names if you need them. And also Special Forum, 
uh, sorry, it's not special forums, it's special forum that will go ahead and take you to the support forum. We have many, many users on the wiki uh, forums who have been editing CSS for years and years. They'll be very happy to help you, um, give you some tips, um, even give you a little bit of code to help get you started. That's a great place to go. So uh, we're going to go ahead and move on. We have some questions, I believe, and we'll get to them, Sarah. Awesome. Thank you, Tim, for all of that. I know that it's really deep and slightly overwhelming, but this was a really good, uh, Tim just sighed with relief. Um, usually he likes to talk a lot more. <laughs> um, but, but taking some of these basic steps, you can really start to tweak. And we really suggest, you know, start small, start with just adjusting an info box just for your characters and then taking that and getting more complex from there. Before we do the questions, because one of them actually relates to this, um, I just want to do a shout out to our upcoming webinar on April 5th, which is called Making Your Wiki Mobile Friendly. One of the first questions that came in was about how the wiki actually loads on the people's phones. I know a lot of people are viewing Wikia now from your iPhone or your iPad or other templates or other Android phones or other just smartphones. Um, we're actually going to do a whole session on how to make your main pages and basically your entire wiki look better on both um, on all types of mobile devices. So that's actually only two weeks away. So you can register at the community webinars page. Uh, we also have a recording of all past webinars there. So if you want to watch some older ones. Yeah, some good stuff there. You mentioned, Sarah, social media yeah. last month was a popular topic videos in your wiki. So yeah. uh, chances are we've already covered quite a few of the topics you're asking about on webinars. But if you ever have any ideas for future webinars, you're always free to get in touch with Sarah and yes, uh, we'll consider them. Yeah. There is another one also on CSS there as well as some other admin tools. So if you are an admin on your wiki, there's there's those to check out. Um, a couple of questions that came up. So one of them, and also for those of you out there, please send in questions. I know uh, you might have some, and we can also pull up uh, a live demo from one or two of the wikis uh, if you want to just see them in action as well. So what's the difference, uh, the question from the crowd is, what's the difference between kia.css and common.css? All right, so there are a number of CSS files on Wikia. We went over wikia.css today because that affects the Wikia skin. Um, Common.css affects all other skins but the Wikia skin. Um, traditionally, that happens in General Media Wiki, which supports a number of uh, outdated skins that Wikia no longer supports. So common.css only really applies today to monobook skin. Um, if you do want your common, .css file to apply to both the Wikia skin and the model book skin. You can add an import declaration in your Wikia uh, .css page. Quite a few of the big wikis have them, so if you look around, you can find them. And again, you can ask for the exact syntax of that um, import declaration in uh, the special forums. I honestly don't remember the exact declaration syntax offhand, but it's pretty simple. You just add one line to your Wikia.css page, and it will import the common.css. And of course, if you do that, you're also free to add on extra customizations for the Wikia skin below that import. Great. Um, any tips for science wikis or wikis that don't have as much imagery? So is there any kind of CSS um, that should be applied, maybe ones that are more text heavy rather than visual? Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say there's a specific thing that you can do if your wiki is not image heavy or is image heavy. I would say the important thing, especially if you are really focused on kind of textual content is is to really focus on what I talk about in white space. Um, have nice, even rows, especially if you're a science wiki, you're probably going to have, let's face it, some very big words on your wiki. Um, and oftentimes, the bigger the words are and they're running really close together, the harder they are to read. So um, just good padding, good spacing between those elements. Uh, decoration, or no, sorry, not decorations, uh, decorations. Sounds close. Uh, Bold, underlined text, uh, things that are important, um, especially if doing math equations and like a chemistry book or something like that, that can also help as well. I would guess a science wiki might have tables. Is there anything special for tables you'd recommend? Um, a, a lot of things people like to do is try to add a different color behind each table row. That's kind of a different part of CSS than we talked about here. Okay. Uh, you can look at that at the uh, help webinar page. That's the info box um, webinar. We'll talk to more about that. But um, that's usually a good way to do it is if you are doing tables and they're big tables to have different colored rows. So 
I think that's a good way to go. And it'd be kind of subtle differences, right? So yeah, we're not, like we're, not talking, we're not talking. We're not talking again. Don't don't contrast colors. I'm not saying have one row very dark red and the next row very dark blue. Uh, yeah. You see on a lot of wikis like Wikipedia. That's always a good example, of course. Um, the rows are white and then kind of an off white, white gray, gray. Yeah. so it doesn't really contrast that much it fits very well together but it's just enough difference to help you notice and uh, separate the content well nice um is there any browsers that you feel are ideal to use when doing this or it wouldn't really matter what type of browser you used it's actually a great question um something i would recommend um this isn't on the uh, slide we decided not to do it today because there's a lot of content obviously already there but css3 is kind of a new version of css that's coming out it's getting rolled out to uh browsers as each browser themselves updated it. it's a, an independent language so each browser has to do it on their own to add uh, built-in support for it um but css3 allows for some really cool things um check it out on w3schools.com i know they have a really good page on that like rotating text. Uh, obviously, that's something you probably don't want to use very much. It's kind of Web 1998 right there, but it's an example of something new that CSS will allow you to do. Um, now, no browser out there is 100% CSS3 compatible yet. Okay. Frankly, Chrome is the best browser in terms of that. Okay. IE is actually doing a very good job catching up. They might have leapfrogged Firefox in terms of CSS3 support. Um, and Firefox is still pretty high up there, though. In general, I would say Google Chrome, traditionally, both because they help the CSS organization, W3, mm -hmm. but they also, they release more often than any other browser. Okay. They're going to be the most up-to-date on adding CSS support. Okay. But it is important, though, I should mention, to make sure that, you know, if you're a good admin and you have the ability on your computer to install all three browsers, all three major ones, at least, Chrome, Firefox or Internet Explorer. Of course, if you're in OS, you should also have Safari on your browser. Just to quickly test um, and make sure the wiki looks great in each one because different browsers do handle CSS slightly differently. Mm -hmm. So again, to answer the question, Chrome's a great browser to start with, but I would always recommend checking um, the other browsers as well. Okay. Uh, a question from the crowd um, from someone who said, I'm pretty good with HTML but I'm new to wikis and, are, and I'm new to wikis. Are there uh, wiki specific classes? For example, is Infobox Wikia specific? Or maybe they meant wiki specific. So for if you know each HTML and you're coming to Wikia, you know, Infobox probably won't exist if you're using TypePad or something like that. Yeah. So what are some classes that are common that newer wiki folks should be aware of? Um, well, if you I mean, a great way to find out was to go to some of our biggest wikis, starwars.wikia.com, memoryalpha.org, um, wowwiki, um, elderscrolls.wikia.com, and just see what they have as class names, and you'll end up noticing usually a lot of uh, very um, consistent class names. Um, wiki table is a big one. Info Infobox, info table. But usually it's going to be the table classes will be the most consistent. Um, and that's another thing to mention, by the way. If you are copying over code from a wiki and you think, why is my template that I copied over from, let's say, Wow Wiki, not look the same as it does on Wow Wiki, chances are they have in their wikia.css or common.css page some sort of CSS that's applying to that template that you also need to copy over to get it to exactly match. Yeah. Um, that's why Inspect Element is a great tool. You can essentially just inspect a specific element and see what classes it has, and what other style yeah. uh, implications it has. And a good thing also there is to contact that admin. Sometimes um, people don't love that their things get copied over. So it's also worth saying, hey, I really admire the, how great your info box looks. Do you mind if I copy this? And is there anything else I should really be aware of? I'm going to use a similar style, but adjust it for my wiki. That's a, also mm -hmm. just from a kind of social standpoint. Um, you know, a lot of these wikis have spent years improving their CSS. So just kind of remember, um, it's good to maybe let them know, hey, I'm trying out, I'm learning CSS. You did a great job. We should also mention, of course, that um, there are some skin-specific IDs. We mentioned the the notifications, wiki notifications. A lot of wikis like to uh, customize their wiki header, wiki content, uh, skin ID names that will be easily findable if you use Inspect Element. I don't I know them offhand, honestly, because I don't do a lot of customization anymore. But um, 
you can also use those as well. Those are going to be consistent across every wiki on Wikia, ones that are specific to the Wikia skin. Okay. Um, no questions in the crowd. Feel free to still send them in. One um, I wanted to just ask him is what would you say are a major things to avoid? So I know for me, I have a difficult time when I see wikis that have almost complete transparency. Mm. Um, it makes it really hard to read, especially if you have like a repeating patterned background. Uh, so thinking about how transparent, sometimes like Bioshock, that looked really great. They had black behind the text area and then a light transparency. Um, are there other things that you would say, be careful? Yeah, I mean, what we have in the theme designer is something that allows the text on the wiki to be a color that complements the background color. So if I have a gray wiki background, it's going to be either a blue text or um, if it's a dark gray, it's going to be a white text to help me read. It's possible to go into your wiki as CSS and change that. I really want, unless you're really kind of tweaking that specific color, you know, one way or the other, a few hexadecimal points. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard to read. Um, also, just remember that um, as Wikia grows, we are going to start having more people using templates, um, using the mobile phone, but using the desktop version option on the on their mobile skin. So, you know, it's also going to test those as well, just to make sure that what looks good on desktop on your specific resolution mm -hmm. doesn't always mean it's going to look great on everyone else's resolution. So, screen sizes as well. Screen, screen size, sizes. yeah. You know, if you have a 13 inch versus a 24 inch, that's a big difference. And you want to be careful going from designing at 24 inches to considering most people don't have that big of a screen. Yeah. I also just, I don't want to go on a personal lark here, but you know, rainbow ish colored uh, backgrounds are very distracting um, to the reader. And they also make it hard to follow the text because, you know, if text looks good against the orange part of the background, but looks really bad against the blue part of the background that makes it You can only consistent. read one paragraph. <laughs> you can only read one paragraph at a time. So, yeah. Um, yeah, try to have, I mean, I get you want to have one or two different colors in your background. You want kind of maybe a gradient or two, but it really shouldn't be going crazy. You shouldn't be having a giant rainbow behind your wiki or else yeah. it's very distracting. And Some then, other wikis, by the way, also when you hover over certain elements, they change colors. That's kind of a neat uh, idea to help kind of illustrate where they are on the page. But at the same time, again, if it's too radical but change, like if suddenly I'm on a wiki with an orange background and that element's normally blue and I hover over it and it's suddenly orange again, yeah. I, I lose it. So make sure that the color changes make sense. Okay. Can I use Wikia, another question from the crowd, can I use Wikia.css to change background, to change the background image? Well, I mean, I, again, you theoretically can. I, I wouldn't simply because team designer can do an excellent job of that. And as I mentioned, loading um, the CSS images, using images uh, to be loaded through CSS is a very slow way of mentioning a solution. Um, so you would use theme designer for basically adding a word mark, adding your, your theme, maybe adjusting some links. And then when you're getting more detailed, like adding a detail to an info box, then you go to CSS. Yeah, I mean, if you want to add table rows or you want to do, uh, let's say, red link colors, you want to change them from red to dark red or, I don't know, black or something that make, you know, makes yeah. sense in the context, it, that's where you want to do it. We do see wikis who do use wikia.css, and that's because they're good coders, and, you know, we're not going to stop them from doing that. But, frankly, theme designer, especially for these very basic things like word mark and – um, background color is there because it's the most effective, fast way to do it. So um, we have one like, last question. One last question. Um, so thank you for everyone. And the last one was, why do some media wiki messages allow for wiki text or HTML and others don't? Well, theoretically, all messages do allow for wiki text and HTML. Um, certain ones, when they get rendered on the page, will have the HTML stripped or rendered actually differently. Um, and that's honestly just depending on how every single um, piece of code works. Some code is built to read the MediaWiki message. Um, I don't want to go too technical, but it's called parse inline array in a MediaWiki message extension. And that just means some things are meant to have HTML codes and some things simply aren't. So if you save a page that has, you know, when it saves and you suddenly see an anchor tag or a, or a span tag, you probably shouldn't 
<laughs> you can leave it there. You should go ahead and just roll back that edit. Um, most should be able to um, convert the H convert the message into H from HTML into wiki text or into design. But um, yeah, everyone should be able to convert HTML in theory. You should put you rather you sorry. You should be able to put HTML into every message. Whether or not it converts it is a different matter, and honestly, that's just up to how it was coded initially a long time ago. Um, one last, and thank you, Tim. And there was a, a one suggestion from the crowd for for folks who have vision acuity problems. Yes. Um, you can test colors via a site called colorsontheweb.com. This is from Checkout. Thank you. Um, colorsontheweb.com backslash color contrast. I'm guessing it's folks who yeah, color I mean, blinds. That, that's a great. I mean, I remember. I, one of my most fascinating things I sat through in college was a lecture about uh, disabilities and using the internet. Um, Check out is a good point. I, you know, color blindness isn't, you know, obviously a severe disability, always physical disability, but still it affects how you view the wiki. And then there's other ways people who use your wiki can be affected by specific disabilities. Um, so again, vision problems, um, perhaps typing problems, if they are, um, blind and need to use a screen reader sometimes css can mess it up if you're not careful if you go crazy crazy css and adding html tags everywhere that's going to sometimes mess up how the screen is read to that user so that's why when we go back to when i say remember there are other users than just yourself just because it looks good to you doesn't mean it's gonna look good to everyone so try to be kind of cognizant of how it looks in different browsers to maybe a colorblind person maybe with someone who has a screen reader i know that's a bit complex screen reader part but it's just part of the community. Remember that, you know, you are one part of the community and as an admin, it is your responsibility to create a good environment for people to go to. So um, definitely colorblindness can be affected. Um, blue and green is a good example. A lot of people have a blue green colorblind. If your wiki is very heavy on blue and green, it's going to be very hard for two people to read or sorry, for a few people to read if it's just those two colors. Yeah. Good, great point. Check out. Um, one last thing too, I just wanted to, to say to Tim is when I make these updates to my CSS page, will I see them immediately on my wiki? They should come through fairly quickly sometimes, just depending on how your wiki is cached. That means we essentially save the version of the page to help increase uh, page load. It may take a few minutes to go through. A very good way you can find out, especially if you have Google Chrome, it's open what's called an incognito window that forces your browser to download a new version of the wiki CSS um, because instead of it being cached on your browser, being in incognito mode just says, I want a clean start. And that'll help you see the changes quicker than you would um, if you were just in your browser. But even then, it may still take a few minutes. So don't panic. Um, this way, about 10 minutes or so, I would always say 10, 15 minutes in worst case. Um, and if any of you don't see an improvement, please let us know. Also, be sure to check your error console and make sure using the inspect element that the change was being applied, but maybe not doing what you thought it would do. Just make sure that that's not happening either. Okay, wonderful. Okay, well, um, I want to thank everyone um, who attended here today. We really appreciate it. Um, and thank you for those who sent in links. And thank you to Tim and Trella for presenting and helping out today. And just a last reminder, we do these usually on a monthly basis. Actually, in April, I'm shooting for two. So um, you can always check them out at the on the Community Wiki at Help webinars and see past recordings, and we'll hopefully have this one up soon. So thank you for attending, and have wonderful weekends and editing. Bye.